Hi there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. And if you are wondering, who is this lady up on my screen, on my phone, my computer? Hi, my name is Emma Jean. I am currently an x-ray student and I wanted to make a video of a demonstration of esophagram or upper GI, also known as upper gastrointestinal. Another thing to note that the demonstration I did do was double contrast and meaning that the crystals created air as a contrast and barium for regular contrast. So not exams require double contrast, but my simulation was required to talk as if it was. And if it is just a single contrast, you would do everything that I have said except involve the crystals portion of it. At the end of the video, I will also go over a GI demonstration. Not the full thing, but just more go over the differences between the two because they are very, very similar. And plus, I don't want to repeat myself because it's it's basically the same thing that you say to the patient. It just a few things that you change that you would say to them. Hi, my name is Emma Jean and I will be your x-ray tech for today. Before we get started with the procedure, I will need you to change into a gown. Please remove any metal in the area that we're looking at, which will be your esophagus going down into the stomach. So if you do have a belly piercing of any kind or any metal in that region, please take it off and I will meet you back here. I would just like to confirm another thing. Please state your first, last name and date of birth. All right, so I do have a few questions for you before we get started and I explain to you about the procedure. Um, any chance of pregnancy? All right, any known allergies? Have you had any surgeries or surgeries in the region that we're looking at today? Okay, lastly, why are you here? What's going on? All right, so your doctor did order you an esophagram. It's a procedure that we're looking at the tube that connects to your stomach. First off, we will give you crystals that you will drink with water. What this does is creates air in your esophagus or expands it, so you might have the urge to feel to burp, but try to avoid that. I will also be giving you barium, which is a contrast that we used. This barium is a white color with the consistency of chalkiness or a milkshake. It doesn't taste the best, but it does help us to highlight the region that we're looking at to better see the pictures. First off, we will have you drink the barium while we are taking live pictures while you were standing up. The live pictures is known as fluoroscopy or fluoro. You may be in different positions while you are standing up and drinking the barium. The radiologist will be with us as well to help assist. After you are upright taking pictures standing up, we will also have you be laying down, also maybe being in different positions. After that, when you are done with this whole exam, which can take about 10 to 15 minutes, um, drink lots of water to help flush the barium out of your system. Don't be alarmed if you do see your poop to be the color of the barium, the whitish or gray color, as this can continue for 48 to 72 hours. Again, drinking lots of water to help this to flush out of your body. After we're done with the exam, the radiologist will look at these images and send it to your doctor who referred this exam for you. However way that they get the results to you, um, they'll either contact you or you will have to contact them for those results. And that will be how the procedure will be going for today. Other than that, do you have any questions for me? What I talked about is the demonstration for the esophagram. When it comes to upper GI, there are a few differences, but the explanation is pretty much the same. The differences are if it's still gonna be double contrast, you would still explain it the same way. If it is single contrast, you would just let them know it is barium without the crystals being involved. Another thing with upper GI is that it involves the esophagram, also involves the stomach and the small intestines. That being said, with it involving more organs, the exam will take longer. Esophagram, again, I mentioned it takes about 10 to 15 minutes, where an upper GI may take about 20, 25, maybe even 30 minutes. All right, so it will depend on your school for the requirement of the simulation for you in order to pass. With me seeing the simulation like I did just before this, I did get full points on it. I think it is very important to make sure you have all the key points. First off, explaining who you are, your first and last name, that you are an x-ray tech. 
you have them change into a gown, remove any metal or anything that might be in the obstruction or in the way of the exam. Because if you don't do this or let them know, it may cause a repeat, which causes more exposure to the patient, which also causes delay in the procedure overall. Another thing, very important, I know it's like a no brainer, but just to confirm that you have the right patient. You might think so, you probably have confirmed it beforehand before grabbing them, but just for the sake of making sure you have the right patient, go over again what their first and last name is and date of birth. Also to ask why they're here for the exam. If they have no idea why they're having the exam or maybe it's referred by a doctor they've never heard of, you might have the wrong patient or you might have the wrong exam and that's completely fine. You should confirm that so that you can then talk to the patient and see if they're having knee pain. They probably shouldn't be having an esophagram. <laughs> you do wanna make sure, and if that's the case, you would reach out to the radiologist or the referring doctor to see what steps can be taken or just to confirm this is the right exam for them. It's just crucial in general to explain this procedure to them because they've probably had not had this exam before. And if they have, you still need to go over at least a brief description of the procedure. It's important to go over their allergies as well. Again, this might be something you went over beforehand in their chart, but their chart is not always updated. It might say NKA, also known as no known allergies, but it does not hurt to ask because changes can always happen. There might be a situation where they are allergic to the barium the contrast that is being used for the exam. And if that's the case, that's all right, but the radiologist does need to be informed so that another contrast, an alternative one can be used. Chance of pregnancy is always important to, to see if they can still have this exam, if there is a chance of them being pregnant. Surgeries are also another thing because if they did have surgery in that region of interest, another contrast may, be to, may have to be used. If their surgery happened to be somewhere like their foot, then the exam will be okay to proceed, but it is always a good idea to ask the patient. It is a good thing to mention that the radiologist will be in the room just in case the patient is confused as to why there is another person in the room or who that person is that is also with them taking the x-rays. So it's a good way to just say who the radiologist Radiologist is as well as the name of the radiologist that is coming in. The radiologist usually will always introduce themselves, but it's a good thing to also slip that in there when you do speak to the patient. Letting the patient know that they will be moving in different positions is a good way to just let them know it's a better way for us to get more images, better views of what's going on with them, just so they have an idea and they aren't surprised that we keep having them to move in different positions. Another thing that may happen is the patient may call the radiology department or the referring doctor and be very scared or alarmed that their poop is the color of the contrast that they drink from this exam always a good thing to let them know it is normal and it will happen 48 to 72 hours and just to keep drinking water if this was something that was told to them during the exam they wouldn't have called the radiology department or the referring doctor in the first place lastly a lot of patients don't really know where the results may go to it's always good to explain to them that it does go to the doctor who it was referred to. If they need to ask who the referring doctor is, that's a good thing to also note down to let them know that this is the doctor who ordered this exam for them. If they have any questions or maybe they haven't received the results, they can always reach out to that doctor. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye.